Hello, I'm Pam Munoz Ryan, author of many books for children and young adults, including the novels Esperanza Rising, Writing Freedom, The Dreamer, and Deco. Along with my publisher Scholastic, I'm excited to participate in World Read Aloud Day, a day when people around the world celebrate the magic of reading to one another. This is an opportunity to let your voice be heard. By joining me on World Read Aloud Day, we will all be promoting the idea that reading is a valuable gift and that everyone on planet Earth should have the privilege of learning to read and write. I've been asked to speak to you about hope, about wishes and dreams and optimism. From my standpoint as a writer, I see hope as all the possibility a character cannot yet see. I often put my characters in difficult and emotionally challenging situations, but I also try to give them the opportunity to overcome those difficulties. I try to give the reader the feeling in their heart that although the character's circumstances may dramatically change, he or she still has the power to go on, to put one foot in front of the other, to grow and change. Sometimes I even foreshadow the idea of hope at the very beginning of a book with a proverb a quote, or a prophecy. In Esperanza Rising, he who falls today may rise tomorrow. In Echo, even in the darkest night, a star will shine. And in The Dreamer, a quote by Pablo Neruda, look around, there's only one thing of danger for you here, and that is poetry. Why do I do this? because I want the reader to know that no matter the circumstances, my character's world is brimming with possibility. I'd like to share a passage from The Dreamer. It's about a boy, Neftali Reyes, who grows up in Tumuco, Chile. In the story, Neftali helps his uncle, who is the editor of the newspaper, write articles about people who are persecuted. The government did not like this. This scene takes place after his uncle's newspaper office has been burned to the ground and it seems as if all hope has been lost. Neftali looked at his uncle in disbelief. Everything his uncle had built was now gone. Why was his uncle not fighting mad? Neftali threw up his arms. I see nothing. The walls are gone, the machines are destroyed, there's nothing left except one empty drawer. Uncle Orlando held up his hand. To stop Nephthali's ranting, he walked to a mound of smoking ash and kicked it with his boot. Underneath, glowing embers pulsed like a heart. You're wrong. Just like the volcano Mount Yaima, there is always something burning beneath the surface. Sometimes it takes years to erupt, but eventually it will. Nephew, they may have silenced my newspaper, but they will never silence my pen. He extended his outstretched hand to Nephthali. Nephthali looked into his uncle's determined eyes. He did not see a man defeated by exhaustion. He saw a man ready to fight another day. He did not see a man covered head to toe in soot. He saw a man covered in righteousness. He did not see a man's red and blurry eyes. He saw an intense resolve to speak for those who could not speak for themselves. Nephthali reached out and gripped his uncle's palm and held it tight. Nor will they silence mine. On World Read Aloud Day, February 1st, grab a book, a magazine, a newspaper, or something you have written, and look for an audience, a parent, grandparent, brother or sister, neighbor, your dog or cat, even a stuffed animal will do, and read aloud so the world can hear your voice.